It's Matt Fouch here. Uh, thanks for joining me for the video. This video is going to be a little lengthy today. Um, first off, let me say, if, if you're just catching this video for the first time on my channel, um, I know you're here to watch these interview videos um, with Amber Nealon and Kelly Nealon, and that is the point of this video. But I do want to give you a little um, backstory. And for those that have been here before, you know, you pretty much come to my channel for two reasons. That's why folks come to this YouTube channel. One is to watch the interviews that I've done over the years with the different Southern gospel music artists. And then the other reason is for some solo music that I put out. Um, if you're here for the solo music, I do have more music coming this year. You can check that out as the year goes on. But a lot of you come here for the interviews that I've done over the years. Started out as On the Couch with Fouch, did those at National Quartet Convention and different events around the country. Then during COVID, it kind of transformed into Fouch and Friends, where we did just Zoom interviews and released those for you guys to kind of keep up with us, what the artists were doing during COVID and into 2021. I got my real estate license during COVID, and so I have been focusing my efforts on real estate, and I've only been able to do four or five interviews pretty much since 2021. So I haven't been able to do an anywhere near what I used to do. Um, early on of uh, doing the interviews, Danny Jones, who is with Singing News, he came to me and he said to me that, um, he said, it looks like everything's going great with the interviews. He said, the one thing that I absolutely love about it is that regardless of the time frame in the future, whether it's five years or 50 years or a hundred years, whatever it is, so long as YouTube still exists and these videos are still allowed on the platform, then folks in the future will be able to come back and get to know the artist in Southern gospel music on a personal level. Because what I try to do with the interviews is I try to make them more personal. I, I try to go outside of just saying, what's your new recording that you're working on? What's your current radio single? I try to ask them personal questions, fun road questions, things of that nature, and just try to treat it like it's a discussion between two people. And um, that's what folks have told me over the years that they like the most about the interviews that I do. So now we're getting to where we're at today. So a little over a week ago, we all got the tragic news that there was a plane crash and that um, several people from our gospel music family had been involved. And so... Um, we, we lost several dear friends and great artists, um, for, for Southern gospel music. Um, today I logged on to YouTube and I saw that there was a whole lot of people, um, that had actually been viewing the interviews that I have done over the years with Amber Nealon and Kelly Nealon. Now, unfortunately I was not ever able to sit down with Jason, or Amber's hu husband, Nathan, and do an interview with them. But I was able to get an On the Couch with Fouch interview with Amber and Kelly. And then during COVID, I also did a Fouch and Friends interview with Amber as well. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to put all three of those interviews onto one video. And I'm sorry this is a little lengthy, but I wanted to give um, the folks that maybe hadn't seen this channel before these video, give them a little backstory. What I wanted to do is I want to put them all on one video. So that way, um, as Danny said, you could get to know these two ladies in kind of a little more personal way, hear a little bit about their, their musical journey. Um, kind of where, and, and now some of these are uh, a little dated. So, um, 2017, 2018 and 2020, I think it was. So they're a little bit older now, but it's still a great way for us to um, enjoy hearing from them, enjoy hearing a little bit about their story and um, connecting with them. And so I wanted to put them all on one video and put them out for you all to watch. So these, uh, the next 45 minutes to an hour or so of this video is going to be the interviews that I did with those ladies. And I know so many of us are praying for the families and um, the loss that they have endured. And I uh, know that we all will continue to pray for them as they go forward. So here are the three interviews that I did with um, two of them with Amber Nealon and the one with Kelly. 
And welcome back to Fouch and Friends, interviews with your favorite gospel music artist. If it's your first time, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell to get notifications so you don't miss any of the future videos. This interview features Amber Neelan Kistler of the Neelans. We had a great conversation during this stay at home time. You guys are going to enjoy hearing from Amber and everything that's going on with the Neelans. What's up, Amber? How are you today? Hey, Matt. It's good to see your face. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's like it's like we only see each other right now on uh, on social media. That's it, right? It's so weird. It's so yeah. weird. Yeah, it's it's been crazy, but God's been good, and we're all, I at least the, from the folks that I have talked to, we're making it through, and God right. is providing. So what what has been going on for you guys? I know you're involved in a couple different ministries. Yeah. Uh, with your husband and then the music as well. So how's it been going for you all? It's been, you know, just like you said, God has been so good, even during this whole crisis period. I mean, of course, just like y'all, our family has been off since March. Um, you know, all of our dates canceled from, I mean, we really don't know. I think <clears throat> July is about the soonest that it picks back up. <clears throat> and um, and you don't even know about July, really. Right. Nobody really knows. Uh, but on the other side, my husband's ministry has not stopped. Uh, he works in Washington, D.C. Uh, with a ministry mm -hmm. called Hope to the Hill. Yeah. And um, he goes and he prays for members of Congress and the Senate. And even though right now they're not allowing people into the Capitol building there in the city, he has been doing prayer phone calls with members every single week. And so nice. he'll have about 25 members who will get on a call. And each of them pray their own prayer individually on that phone call. So that phone call could last about an hour and a half each week. And it's just a way for these members of Congress. And let me just add, there's Democrats and Republicans both on that phone call. Um, and they, they're praying for the country. Um, they're praying for us. They're praying for wisdom. And um, so it's a really, I love his ministry. I love what he does. Um, I just think it's so unique. There really isn't anything else out there like what he does. And um, he builds relationships with these people, not to gain anything out of it, but to give them something, which is hope and encouragement. They never get that. Most people, uh, they walk in their office and they say, I want, I want, I want. And Nathan walks in and says, what can I do for you? And yeah. so that's been, that's been really cool. And when all this pandemic started, you know, they were in the Capitol and they had what they call a skeleton staff, which means they sent pretty much 90 percent of the staff home from the Capitol. And they kept maybe one or two of their staff in their office when they're used to having 10 to 15 people in there. And so they uh, were running out of supplies, just like all of us were. You know, we had the toilet paper crisis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still confused on that one. <laughs> I don't know right. why toilet paper. I mean, we could have a, a just ice and people go buy the milk and bread, but we have a pandemic and it's toilet paper. It makes no sense to me. But uh, yep. they were running out of that. And then, of course, the meat started. The meat started to go and they couldn't find hamburger meat or just meat to cook at home. So Nathan and I, uh, we decided that we felt like God had laid it upon our hearts. Um, a lot of these members, they don't have cars in the city because they take the train or they take, um, you know, Ubers and all that stuff. Well, all that was gone when the pandemic started, all their transportation was gone. And so, um, th when they go to grocery stores, they have no way of putting something in a trunk to take it back to their house. So Nathan and I got a van that uh, his ministry has, and we loaded up, we stopped at every grocery store from North Carolina to Virginia and just tried to find supplies. We took orders from them. And um, that was our ministry to them for that week was just delivering supplies to these members and, wow. and their staffers. And so that was a really cool moment um, because it was actually being the hands and feet of Christ. You know, it wasn't just saying, let me pray for you. It was actually going and doing something for people and probably the people that a lot of people don't want to help right now. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's awesome. And I, yeah. and I know that uh, I've connected with Nathan with his ministry and, and donated to it in the past. Uh, and if if folks are here, I mean, we're going to talk about the music and everything. But real quick, give a plug where if folks want to be a part of a ministry that is ministering to those in office, where can they go to connect with that and donate? 
Yeah, they can go straight to their Facebook page. It's called Hope to the Hill. And there's actually a donate button on their Facebook page that will actually direct them to the website where they can just go right to it if they felt led to do that. Um, but the most, thing that, the most important thing that we treasure is just people's prayers because what Nathan does is um, it's not an easy job because, you know, we believe that God is not partisan. We believe he yeah. loves all people. And politically speaking, everything is so partisan. You know, everybody has their views and beliefs. We have our own views and beliefs. And sometimes it's hard for people to lay that down and just look at people as human beings and realize mm -hmm. that they all need Jesus at the end of the day. They all need Christ and they need prayer and they need wisdom. And, uh, you know, Nathan has, he's done very well at being that person. And so um, I've learned a lot just watching him with these people. There's a lot, you know, you watch on the news and people start to gain a hatred for other people because of just their views and their opinions, but yeah. they're still children of God. At the end of the day, they're still created by God, just like you and I. And so we're called to love them. That's our calling is to love on them. And we may not agree, but I don't agree with some Christians either. So we're called to love everybody. Yeah, that's good. And I, I love his ministry and, and we've been a part of his dad's I think it was last year for 4th of July. Yeah. We were part of the 4th, 4th of July celebration. That was a lot of yeah, fun. And really they've cool. got a great ministry. So y'all check them out. Uh, what have the Neelands been doing during this time? <laughs> well, the Neelands, even though the singing aspect is on hold as far as concerts go, my parents, you know, they bought a farm and they are out mm -hmm. in... Rootville, Georgia. The population is 229 people. <laughs> they are in the middle of nowhere and they love it. They absolutely. Now, my mom, who has been raised in the city her whole life, I think this was culture shock, but uh, she has grown to love the cows. <laughs> nice. And uh, she has tried to name all the cows, which we told her is a very bad idea. Yeah. And um, so the last. A uh, bull that was born, they named it Bull Gaither. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, they did it. Yeah, they did. No. His name is Bull Gaither, and he's adorable, but uh, <laughs> they've got Karen Peck Mooch. That's one of the cows. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> oh, I'm my. serious. My mom has named these cows, and so <laughs> they've been <laughs> they've been working on the farm. They have a wedding venue there, and they've actually had a few weddings that, you know, were socially distanced, but they, they had a lot of weddings that came, and um, so they've been doing all that, and then for Mother's Day, she got her first horse, and the horse's name is Sugar. Of course, that was the horse's name when we got it for her, but so now she's into riding horses and taking care of them, but um, we just released our latest single on video. We did a Zoom video because we can't shoot a music video and it's called if god pulled back the curtain love that song such a well-written song by kennel west and it's just oh my goodness it gives me chills when i sing it just gives me chills so you think bill will be contacting her to come out and do a video on the farm anytime soon oh you know we told bill <laughs> about the little bull and he said my whole life i've always wanted to be a bull <laughs> It's his pride and joy now. I mean, uh, now that is his namesake. <laughs> Little Bull Gaither. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's um that is very odd, but it's awesome. I love it. I love it's it. So we're we're that family. We're strange. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we were talking a few minutes ago about the ministry that Nathan has, and you're a part of that now. Um, yeah. Talk a little bit about married life. I mean, you guys haven't been married oh. that long, and how did yeah. the journey go with that? And I did see some photos on social media about a house that you guys did. So talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so we got married in April of last year, 2019. And Nathan is my best friend in the whole world. And we've known each other since we were 13 years old. And his dad, Dave, who you met at his 4th of July uh, event, uh, preached at our church when I was 13. That was the first time I ever met Nathan and his family. And Nathan, he, if he were telling the story, he would say he's chased me ever since then. And he finally convinced me. That's his story. But, you know, Nathan has always had a special place in my heart because he's so genuine. 
Anybody that yeah. meets Nathan knows he's a genuine person. He's always kind. I've never even being married to him for a year. I've seen him get frustrated, but he's, he never gets angry. He's not the kind of person that, um, takes out his anger on anybody or anything. He's very calm and patient. He's not like me at all. <laughs> Total opposite. <laughs> I go for the gut. You know, when I get mad, I'm going to go for the gut <laughs> because yeah. I'm competitive and I'm going to win. <laughs> but Nathan, he's not like that. He's, uh, he's so patient and so loving and marriage has just been, it's been a lot of fun. And I told, we were talking about this the other day. I said, we had gone through premarital counseling, you know, as most couples do. And, uh, we did like four months of premarital counseling just to kind of, you know, they, it, premarital counseling brings up issues that you don't even think about to talk about before you get yeah. married. It talks about right. finances and, and your beliefs and, you know, what are you going to do when you raise kids and all that comes into play when you get married, but you just don't think about it because you're so consumed with wedding planning or getting a house or honeymoon, you know, you're just consumed with all that. So yeah. premarital counseling, which I would advise any couple who is planning on getting married to go through that. Cause it could, mm -hmm. it could save your marriage. Honestly, it really would. Right. And, um, we had gone through all that and just talked about how people had warned us, you know, your first year of marriage, is going to be the hardest first year of marriage is the hardest. And honestly, it hasn't been that way for us. And I'm not just saying that because it's, you know, I'm, Oh, it's an interview. I got to make the world look perfect. It hasn't been that way. And I think because Nathan and I are so raw with each other, we're just real. We don't hide and we have no secrets. We don't hide how we feel. We're very open. And I think your marriage will only be as hard as you make it. And I think mm. that's where people tend to go wrong. Nathan and I have tried to make life easier for the other person. We've always made it about the other one, not yeah. about ourselves. And that's what we were taught, you know, in counseling. And that really helped. It, it changed my mindset. When I stopped thinking about my needs and my wants, and I started thinking about what he needed and what he wanted, and he was doing the same for me, it's amazing when you put God in the center of your marriage, how good it can be. <laughs> and then we wonder how, why that works. <laughs> You know, right. it's because right. God's in the center of it. So it's been wonderful. And, you know, we rented this house that we are living in and, uh, the owners of this house came to us and they said, we want you guys to move in where it's in North Carolina. And we were like, okay, great. We got there and it was very outdated. <laughs> I mean, just, it's not your typical first home. You know, it's not like when you walk in, you're like, this is my first home. I walked in and I was like, Nathan, I don't know. <laughs> I can do this. <laughs> the whole bathroom was pink. The whole wow. bathroom. And I, when I say the whole bathroom, I mean the tile, the tub, the sink, and the toilet were all that 60s, 70s, you know, that era where they all had mm -hmm. like this painted tile. It was atrocious. And I told Nathan, I was like, what are we, we don't own this house. So what do we do? You know, and the guy told us, he said, do whatever you want. Whatever you want to do, because he had seen some of my designing that I had done in other houses for other people. And he said, whatever you do, I trust you. And I was like, okay. So we painted the tile. Turns out you can paint tile. I didn't even know that. Wow. But you can. So we painted that. We've renovated a few things and um, changed the house. But now our quarantine project, we bought a camper and we renovated an entire camper i mean we gutted it out took everything out just it smelled awful looked awful and we have completely renovated it and we're this is the last day actually nathan is fixing the trailer as we speak to hook it up to the truck it's completely done and it looks it looks like uh like right off the lot <laughs> compared to what it did when we got it that's great so where are you guys yeah. gonna go well i'm for the hearing first trip. I'm hearing that Disney is opening up the second week of June. That is what uh, okay. I'm hearing. So if it does, that's our first trip. So it's not going to go to the campground first, as far as like in Tennessee somewhere. We're not going to Gatlinburg no. or Smokies for the first trip. Well, We're you know, doing Disney. Disney does have a campground. Disney has Fort Wilderness Campground. And I'll tell you, Brian Free knows all about it because every time they go, Brian Free and his family stays at Fort Wilderness. He was the one that told me about it. He said, we take the bus. 
And he said, we don't ever pay for a hotel because you can park the bus. And I mean, you're on a bus all the time. So, you know, you need water, you need sewage, you know, you got to have a dump somewhere. (laughs) And so they, they have all that. Disney has a campground that has all of that. So Brian goes and he takes his bus and that's where he would park. And it's not expensive at all. It's cheaper than a hotel. So we did that. The Neelands did that in a bus back in January. And mom, I thought was going to hate it. Mom is not campground material. <laughs> she's just not. But she's farm material now. <laughs> she's she, Yeah, somehow she's, she's farm material, but not campground material. I don't know how that works out. But we took her to Fort Wilderness and she loved it. They give you a little golf cart. You can drive around everywhere, the little campground. It's awesome. So cool. we'll go there, you know, if, as long as it opens up. And I'm praying it does. I need Mickey to open the kingdom back up so bad because I miss it. <laughs> oh, having withdrawals. That's awesome. Well, it sounds like you've had a great last year. And even in this time of stay at home, you're making the best of it. And yeah. y'all have put out some new music. You've redone a camper. You <laughs> you remodeled a house, you know, yeah. a year and a half ago. You've done a lot of fun stuff. Is there anything over the last um, couple months that this has been happening that you want to share with the folks to encourage them that maybe God has spoken to you or that you felt like you've learned? You know what? I've learned that I think when all of this started, when the crisis started, and I do think it's more of a panic-demic than I think it is a pandemic. Yeah. But when all this started, none of us knew what was about to happen. We've, we've, I've never experienced this. I've heard my grandparents say they've never experienced anything like this. Um, so it, there was a big question mark and fear in everybody's mind. And, of course, you know, in our industry, we've never, ever been home this long in our lives. I mean, we've never been sent home where we've told – We've been told that uh, we can't go to church or yeah. we've been told we can't go sing about God anywhere right now because, you know, we can't be that close to people. That is just mind boggling to me that we are in that state. And so when all of it started, I had a lot of fear. I think our family had a lot of fear. I think all of our friends had a lot of fear because yeah. it not only affects us, um, you know, ministry wise, but it affects financially. I mean, mm-hmm. we don't know how long it's going to go. And I just, I really got alone one day. We were working on the camper. Nathan was gone all day. And I just kind of started to break down. If, I think it finally hit me. You know, I was like, man, we, we had been home for about three weeks. And I think in the beginning, I thought this will all be over with in two weeks and everything will go back to normal. And then it didn't, you know, and then we were still here. And I was on the camper by myself. And I was playing Kurt Franklin's song, um, the song that says, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. Mm -hmm. And it just, it hit. It hit hard that day. And um, so I just started asking God, what would you have me do right now? What can I do? And, you know, Lord, what what does our future hold? And what's going to happen? And how... How are we going to plan? How are how how do we provide for our families? And how are we going to survive this? And it was just like God so clearly said, I hold the future. Yeah. I hold everything in the palm of my hands. Why mm-hmm. are you asking these questions? You already know the answers. And I just had this overwhelming peace that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a spirit of a sound mind and just... I just had this peace that overcame me and I just knew that everything was going to be okay. I didn't know how, I didn't know when, but I just knew that it would. And that's how I have tried to live my life day to day. Nathan and I always say we live our life day to day yeah. and we know we hope and pray and believe that tomorrow's going to be a good day and the next day, but today we're going to live for today. And then when yeah. tomorrow comes, we'll live for tomorrow. And that's how we wake up and we we live our lives. And so after that, life got a little bit happier. The sun started shining. The weather got warmer. And we've just, we've trusted God the whole way. It doesn't mean that I still don't have doubts and questions because I believe we all do. And I think God's okay with that. I think he likes when we have doubts and questions because it brings us closer to him. It means we have to come back and ask him and actually talk to him. And so Nathan and I have just... We've put everything in the palm of God's hands. We have faith. We have joy. 
even in the midst of a trial. And that's because of who we believe in, who our hearts belong to. So I would just encourage everyone, no matter where you're at, no matter if you're financially stricken right now, no matter if you are thinking that God has forgotten about you, he hasn't. He knows right where you are. He knows exactly what you need. And he's going to provide because he always does. That's awesome. I don't think I need to add anything to that. That's good words to close <laughs> this thing out. Hey, where can they connect with uh, you? And you already told them about Hope to the Hill. Yeah. Where can they connect with you and the Neelands? The Neelands have a Facebook page as well. It's just the Neelands on Facebook. It'll have the little blue check mark if you ever wonder which is the real one. Um, their website is theneelands.com. I'm also on Facebook. I'm on all social media as Amber Neelan Kistler now, K-I-S-T-L-E-R. And you can find me on any social media under that name. Awesome. Well, thanks for your time today, Amber. I appreciate it. Tell Nathan we said hello. I will. Thanks, Matt. All right. Take care. All right. Bye. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me for another episode of On the Couch with Fouch. We are at the 2017 National Quartet Convention. We're having a great time. We're getting a lot of interviews in. Hey, if you're watching on Facebook, please hit the like button on the page. Make sure you get notifications, comment, share, all that fun stuff. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe or go to onthecouchwithfouch.com and sign up to get the emails so that you don't miss any of the new interviews. I release one interview every month. It's always a brand new one, so make sure you don't miss them. Guys, for this episode, you get the privilege of getting to meet Kelly Nealon Clark. Aww, Kelly, thank, thank you, you so much for joining me. Well, I'm glad to be here. I've heard all about it. <laughs> so I, I have not watched it. I apologize, but it's my girls good. have told me how wonderful and funny it is. So well, good. Um, I don't even know what to expect today. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see what happens. I did last year here. We I got to interview Amber. Yes. Uh, and I, hopefully next year we'll get to do um, your husband and then go with maybe your, your, your other daughter. You know, <laughs> we'll, we'll see if we can. Maybe we'll spread it out just one a year. That's all the Neelands we can handle is one interview <laughs> well, a year. Autumn never talks. Never oh. talks. I mean, like we've just now got her to sing. I mean, like her whole life she would say, I don't want to get ready. I don't want to put my clothes on and I'm pulling my hair and all that kind of stuff. And she said, I just wish I was a dog. Because <laughs> she could just sit there and do not, you know, eat, sleep, and go outside. That's all she wanted to do. <laughs> well, you know, speaking of dogs, dogs? Sammy. Yes, um, that's a lot my of people baby. know Sammy from Facebook posts and all that. So a question came in about Sammy. Oh, oh. So Pamela Warren, thank you for your question, Pamela. She would like to know, how has Sammy been? You know what? He's doing good. We haven't seen him in a month because he's been at home with Aunt uh, Madison. That's our friend. And so they've been at home, Sam and Buddy. We have two of them, two, two weenie dogs. And uh, he's doing good. You know, he's had his ups and downs. He's 10 years old now. Uh -huh. And so um, I get a little worried, you know, but I don't think about that. So he's good. You know, he, we call him and we talk to him. So <laughs> does he talk back? He talks. Yes, of course he talks. <laughs> Doesn't he, Pamela? He talks. <laughs> <laughs> Pamela must follow the journey. Yes. Uh, what do you got? You don't you guys know. call it something? The, the thing Sam with Cam. Sam Cam. There you go. <laughs> so Sam Cam. You can check that out. Tell them where they can check that out real quick. It, well, over it's here. on YouTube, and it's usually when we do a new one, it's on uh, the Neelands Facebook page. Gotcha. Speaking of the Neelands, yes. Tell these people uh, a lot of the questions about your family. You have a rich family history in gospel music. Tell these people about the his the music history of your family, the well, Neelands. My father, uh, Rex Neeland, started this group forty years ago this year. Wow. 40 years. So you're a 40 year anniversary tour pretty much type of thing. Pretty much so. And I was there, I hate to say it, but I was there the first day and, and so I was only two. But um, uh, it was me and Rodney Swain and Janet Paschal and my father. And I was in high school at the time and uh, my father called and Eva May had retired. And so, and Uncle Alf had retired and um, uh, 
so he was going to, they had to retire and he was going to take over the group and he wanted me to come and sing. And I was so thrilled because really all I ever wanted to do was sing uh, like my father, be with him and sing. And so it was a uh, cherished dream. I'll never forget it. And um, I couldn't wait to get on the bus. And Janet and I were like the best of friends. Um, she had been with the Lefevers uh, at the time, you know, and she's... Um, was with them for about two years, and then when Daddy took over as the Rex Neyland Singers, it was just the best time. We had so much fun. I was just like, I was definitely living the dream. Right. You know, except my, my father, the only thing about it is that um, I was really noticing the guys, and my father was noticing that the guys were noticing me and Janet and so everywhere I went I can remember going to the first convention in Nashville Tennessee and it was in the round you know it was yeah. the, the round room and yeah. I would walk around and I would look around and there he was everywhere I walked my father was there I mean absolutely everywhere <laughs> I went but He's you know what those are he was keeping his <laughs> eye on me he was and on those people right those guys yeah that, you know, so, but you know what? I have fond memories of that. That makes me, he was, he was a protector. Um, he was just a, a good man um, and always told me the things that I needed to know and very helpful. And uh, we, we, uh, as a family, we did things together, you know, and when I got on the road, my father and I, we always played games. And so the guys would go in and do all their work and stuff. And, and daddy and I would sit on the bus and we would play Scrabble. So, wow. you know, just fun things. Good fun memories. Time. Very and good. And speaking of that, that was one of the questions that came in. Uh, what is your favorite memory of your father? Hmm. And I think two or three people asked this question. Well, um, so a lot of people out there have respect for your father, and I guess they they must have great memories themselves. Because if they're asking. They, they know him, they remember him, they have great memories, so they want to know what your favorite memory is. I guess my favorite memory is um, the very first time that he introduced me on stage. And he was, you know, I, I, I understand it now because I have two daughters that are on the, you know, on the stage with us. Mm -hmm. But um, at the time, I didn't quite get it, but I've got a tape of it. I've got a, an audio of it. And the first time he introduced me and, and talked about how much he loved me and, and uh, how proud he was. And he said, one of the things he said, I could hardly stand on the stage when she sings our first song. It was The Sun's Coming Up. And um, matter of fact, on Saturday, tomorrow night at, at the convention, um, we're doing a tribute to him. And we have that audio. Oh, wow. So I have to sing right after that. So that's oh, my favorite. You have to try to sing I'm right going to try because, you know... I'm emotional, yeah. you know, but, um, yeah, that's one of my favorite memories. And it's special. Yeah. Now we, I have some memories that are not so, uh, you know, uh, emotional. Like one year at Christmas, um, uh, he, he, we had all of our presents when they were all wrapped and, and, you know, I'm not being selfish or anything, but my brother got a lot. He got a lot of things and I didn't get it. I hardly got anything. And I was so disappointed. I tried not to look disappointed, but I, I did. I couldn't help it. And at, after we had opened up everything, I think I was 13 years old and my brother got a Batman stuff and a Batmobile. And I just got some, a few little games. And I was like, man, I must have really been bad at the very it's end. better than coal. Yeah, it was. It was. And I, you know, I was glad for what I had, but I just thought compared to what he got, he was right. a special child. And at the very end, he pulled out this little box, he and my mama did. And uh, I opened it up and it was a little diamond ring. You know, I uh, love, I love bling. And it, it was a, my first diamond ring. It was my birthstone. And it, I'll never forget it had little diamonds all the way around it. I thought it, it it might have been, you know, like little tiny to, to most people. To me, it was the uh, it was huge, you know. Do you still have that ring? I do. You do. do I you, do. I, mean, I can't wear it. My I was going to say, have you sized it to no. where you can wear it or anything? No, my hands are a little bigger than they used to be. But um, no, but I, I still have it. That's cool. That's a great memory. It is. Very special, too. Sweet. Awesome. No, it was kind of mean. <clears throat> kind of mean of him. But he was always <laughs> he set doing you like up. that. Set you up. He but was he paid like it all. that. He was playing jokes on, every t <laughs> on everybody. Matter of fact, let me just tell you. 
tell you this. He okay. He 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 played jokes on so many people, like like Brock Spears. You know, they were all best yeah. of friends, and um, Brock was dying at the time, and he was in the bed, and and Daddy went there and um, got in the bed with him and talked to him and sang with him and stuff. Um, anyway. Um, he was coming back to visit him and Ben what Ben Spear was talking to Brock and said Brock Brock hadn't spoken you know he had Alzheimer's at the end and he hadn't spoken in like weeks and so Ben looked at Brock and telling Brock hey Brock um Rex is coming over here to see you do you want to see do you want to see Rex and Brock after weeks of not speaking went no <laughs> Did that is the Stay honest away. truth. That is the truth. Oh, so Daddy had a, a a reputation for you know being a jokester, practical jokester. Yes, he was. Yeah. And there's a lot of guys in gospel music and a lot of people that do have that because you got to keep it lighthearted. You do. You know, we're you, out here together, and yeah. we're you know we're out for long periods of time. We've been yeah. out for almost a little over a month now. So. Wow. That is a long time. It's a long sure. time with all, two dogs. Yeah. <laughs> all of these years singing. What would you say is a verse, a thought, a, um, a moment, a spiritual lesson that really sticks out to you that means, I don't know, really want to say means more now, but something out of all these years, something that really is a spiritual lesson or a verse or whatever that sticks out to you that you know, you've learned. I've learned through the years because I've been through some trials. You know, I've been through some things, and and at the time when my um, I went through my father, Pat, my mom passed away, and I went through a divorce, and my father passed away. And the, you know what? These are real things of life, things that you don't plan, things that you don't want to happen, yeah. but they happen. Sometimes they happen beyond your control. And I've learned. Um, I, w I went through a period of depression you know, at the time, where I just thought, you know what, I'm not going to make it. And I've learned that um, the Lord always gives us hope. Mm -hmm. And He always gives us grace and peace and love. And uh, I, I was looking at this, this tunnel of darkness, and uh, uh, it was just like this black hole. And I learned that if I began to look at that as a tunnel, because the tunnel at the end has light, yeah. and that's the light of the Lord. And the mm. Lord will get you through anything, for I know the plans I have for you. Mm -hmm. You know, And the, He promises He'll never leave us. He never does. Never forsake us. And He brought me through all of that, and, and uh, you know... He's been better to me than I could ever possibly say. I've got two wonderful daughters and a husband, and my daughters sing. I mean, I can say this because I'm their mama, <laughs> but they sing like angels, and it's it's a it's a God given talent. You know, my yeah. father. If you can see the good things from heaven, he is beaming mm -hmm. at how good they're doing. I remember people saying, "I wish you could see your dad." When he enters, when when you're introduced, he just beams when you sing, and I didn't get it till now, but I beam when they sing. Yeah, it touches. But touches you guys me. are absolutely known across gospel music for great family harmony, uh -huh, great you. voices, great singing. You guys do some great acapella arrangements, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I I think he and you have reason. To be beaming uh, I'm, <laughs> with, I'm proud. with pride and, and excitement about what you guys have, have done and what the sound you have and the music you create. Thank for you. For sure. You're welcome. Thank you. Rick Schmidt submitted a question. Thank you for your question, Rick. His question is, how many Krispy Kreme donuts oh, can you Kr eat? I knew that's who that was. <laughs> <laughs> He's the Krispy Kreme guy. <laughs> he is, and he always brings us Krispy Kreme. I love when that hot sun is on. You know, I'm a diabetic, so I'm not supposed to be eating Krispy Kreme. But I'm going to tell you, when that hot sun comes on, I'm going to stop. I'm going to get at least one. You're salivating. Yes, I am. God. I love something them. happens. Like there's something in your brain. He brought us some that, tonight. When you <laughs> did he? He's that's here. A, that's the He's, perfect time for the question. I know. <laughs> no, it was. He's from Texas, and I never dreamed he'd be here. And I looked in the back, I went, we've got Krispy Kreme. <laughs> so I saw him a couple days ago here at NQC. And it's funny that you say he brought some tonight, because when I passed him in the hallway, I didn't see him at the table. I was walking somewhere, and we passed in the hallway. When I saw him, he said something about 
you know, sorry, I don't have any Krispy Kreme donuts with me tonight or whatever. And I said, well, you're in luck, Rick, because there's a Krispy Kreme right here in Pigeon Forge down the street. And when that hot now sign is on, make sure you go down there and get a few dozen for all. Exactly. All. <laughs> exactly. Honestly, I could probably eat. I could probably eat six or seven. I don't, but I could. That's good. I could. I, it's just like once you get started, you can't. There's stop. something in. I was gonna say this earlier. There's something in your brain. I think that when you see that hot now sign and it's on, I think there's something in your brain that switches to like must have donut, must eat. <laughs> you know, and you just like you become a robot I, and you just like start grabbing them, um, and they just like melt in your mouth. And they, I mean, it's, it's just it's crazy I how many you can put it away. When I was pregnant, I was. I, th- I don't remember if it was Amber or Autumn, but I gained. Oh my goodness, I gained so much weight, but it was because every night I would stop at Krispy Kreme and get those. It's like, I can't get enough donuts. Give me more donuts. It's like, I, th- I think it's awesome that he brought you guys donuts today. <laughs> That's like the really perfect did. timing. Rick, way <laughs> to you, go, Rick. dude. Perfect timing for that. <laughs> hey, this part of the program, I normally go into a um, what we call the Fouch Zone. Mm-hmm. And in the past, what it's been is rapid fire questions Mm -hmm. that I try to put you in a position where you're like, you can't think fast enough to answer the questions, but I'm going to switch it up. Okay. okay? So what I've done this time is, um, should I be scared? We have, we have eight, uh, eight jokes written down on paper here and you're going to pick four and, and I'm going to, I may have 10 here, but we'll, uh, we'll divide them up in half. What we're going to do is you're going to read the joke or I'll read the joke. We're gonna give each other a chance to try to answer, and then we'll give each other the punchline. The okay, so say that again. Okay. Uh, you know what I'm thinking is that I don't have my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> so it's gonna really depend on how big these are. <laughs> okay, so let me, here, I'll, I'll get you, um, let's Find see. one that's written really big. Three, four, five. Okay, so here's five. Okay. Here. Is that big enough? Yes, I can see this one. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so what I'm going to okay, do. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. I have jokes. You have jokes. We're each going to read each other the joke. Pause for a moment. Let the other person try to answer. If they can't answer, you give the punchline to the joke. Okay? okay. The first person to laugh at the other person's joke loses. Oh, I'm bad. So we're going to see who can hold their composure and their laughter the longest. I think you're going to win. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, would you like to go first I'll or go second? first. Okay. Why was the teacher cross-eyed? This is some kind of glasses. This is a good one for me. <laughs> okay, so it has to be oh, like Oh, I can't a, laugh. I'm sorry, I already laughed. <laughs> it has to be like a, more of a, <laughs> oh, okay. than just a. Okay, but I, what, what okay. were we to say? Because yeah, I didn't yeah, give okay, the punchline. Yeah, okay, What's the I don't know. Okay. Because he couldn't control his pupils. <laughs> that was... Okay. <laughs> All Stop. right. I'm sorry. Okay. Where do sheep get their hair cut? From the shear shop? That's a good question. From the baba shop. Baba shop. Oh, that's even better. Yes. Okay. All right. That's a good one. That's a good one. What kind of fish is famous? Tell me. A starfish. I get it. I get it too. Not really funny, but I get it. What do you get when you cross a snake with a pie? A snake with a pie. A python. Hmm. (laughs) Okay. Almost. Almost almost got her on that one. That was a good one. All right. Why did the burglar take a take a bath? Why did the burglar take a bath? I don't know. Can you read the I can't. Uh, he wanted to make a clean getaway. That, that's good. <laughs> okay. Your turn. What time do you go to the dentist? At tooth hurty. Tooth. Tooth hurty. Okay. Do you get it? I get it. I'm going to win. Uh, we each have a couple more. Okay. What kind of nut has no shell? I don't know. A donut. I'll speak. 
<laughs> That's Rip, perfect. Just for you. <laughs> did, did you laugh before me? I don't, I that think was we were, perfect. I think there's a tie. That was awesome. <laughs> this, I think this interview was destined to be because Rick. It's sponsored by Krispy With the Krispy Kreme donut. The donut. Okay, I got two more I want to read. Okay, it. all right. What kind of keys can't open locks? Monkeys. Oh, gosh. <laughs> no. Okay. What kind of witch do you find at the beach? Oh, I don't know. A sandwich. Oh, <laughs> I've got one more. Okay. Knock, knock. Who's there? Doris. Doris who? Doris locked. Please let me in. <laughs> <laughs> doors locked. <laughs> You're saying doors get out. <laughs> Kelly, this has been a blast. That's, Thanks so much. Oh, no, thank you. I've had a fun time. Uh, too. Tell all these folks watching where they can catch up with you and all of the Neelands. The Neelands uh, on Facebook and Kelly Neeland Clark on Facebook, thenealands.com, at the Neelands on Twitter. Uh, we're on the Neelands official Instagram, and that's and, and we're all on <laughs> we're all on everything. And okay, so I gotta, I'm not on Snapchat. I got to say this real quick. This is on the couch with Fouch. You can catch it on the couch with Fouch.com. But I do have to say this, as this is going to be the outro here. They're also the spokespeople. For KrispyKremeDonuts.com. Yes, we are. Go get you a Krispy You can check them out at KrispyKreme.com. <laughs> Guys, thanks so much for watching On the Couch with Pouch. Kelly, again, thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great time thanks and a, a great day. God bless. <laughs>